good afternoon friends today i'm going to talk to you about guidelines for vaccination against hepatitis a and hepatitis e hepatitis a virus is excreted in the feces of an infected person and is transmitted by fecal oral route this can be through close personal contact with the infected person or through contamination of food or of drinking water. Humans are the only reservoir and one does not get it from the animals. Once infection occurs, the outcome can be very variable from an entirely asymptomatic infection to the most commonly recognized form that is acute viral hepatitis where jaundice occurs and lasts for a few days to a few weeks. This again can vary from mild to moderate to severe and a small proportion of those infected develop fulminant liver failure, which is a serious illness, needs hospitalization and can be fit. The outcome is determined by several factors of which age at the time of infection is the most important. As we see in the graph on the right, when infection occurs in first decade of life, only a small proportion of those infected have symptomatic disease or develop jaundice. But as infection increase, age increases, by adolescence, nearly 80% of those infected develop icteric disease. Another important feature is that once a person has hepatitis A virus infection, he acquires lifelong lasting immunity to this virus. So there are several different epidemiological patterns in most parts of Africa and in several parts of Asia. We have antibodies to hepatitis A virus nearly universal by 10 years of age. This is because nearly everybody gets infected with this virus in the first decade of life. At that time, the infection is not associated with symptoms and beyond that, infection does not occur because of the lifelong immunity. So even though infection is very common, disease is infrequent. By contrast, the green curve shows us what happens in developed countries, low endemicity countries. We can see very few of those up to the age of 20 or 25 years have antibodies, meaning they have never been exposed because infection rate is very low. All these persons beyond that age who some of them have antibodies, that's also because transmission was common in childhood when they were children. And then there are intermediate patterns, not very high, but high or intermediate as shown by the lighter colored group. In this, the force of infection is less common, is less intense in childhood, so that a large proportion of people by the time they become adolescents are still unexposed and they keep getting infected at older ages and disease becomes very common, even though infection is not as common as in hyperendemic countries. And this is the parts of the world where different patterns are seen. The red pattern indicating a very high endemicity, orange a high endemicity, light blue intermediate endemicity, and dark blue low endemicity. Now let's come to vaccines. There are two categories, inactivated vaccines made by several manufacturers and available in most countries around the world. Despite being from different manufacturers, they are very similar to each other. Two doses are needed by intramuscular route and are administered after first year of life. The interval between doses can be very variable, but usually six to 12 months is recommended. Live attenuated vaccines are manufactured only in China, but are exported from there to many other countries. These need one dose and by subcutaneous route. Being live, these cannot be given to immunosuppressed or to pregnant women. The two types share the characteristics of being safe, highly immunogenic, very effective, even when given after a person has already been exposed to the virus. The protection is long-lasting. 
possibly for lifelong. And there are recent data that show that even for inactivated vaccine, one dose is as good as two doses. Who should get this vaccine? The high risk groups who have a higher risk of getting infected with this virus. These are people who live in low endemicity countries such as USA or UK or other parts of Europe when they travel to high endemicity areas. Men who have sex with men, people who inject drugs or are on lifelong treatment with blood products such as hemophilia. Also staff of daycare centers because they deal with small children who are not toilet trained may have greater risk of exposure to this fecal oral transmitted virus. Persons with chronic liver disease, that is cirrhosis, their risk of infection is not higher, but if infection occurs, they are at a greater risk of liver failure and to have uh, mortality. But all these situations apply primarily to low endemicity areas. In high endemicity areas of Africa and Asia, people with these risk factors having been exposed to the virus in early childhood are already immune and therefore do not get disease. Another possible use is, uh, or another use is when a country is transitioning from very high endemicity or high endemicity to intermediate endemicity. Due to improved hygiene, the risk of hepatitis A virus transmission comes down when the endemicity pattern changes, a larger proportion of population grows through childhood without getting exposed or have developing immunity. So the average age at infection goes up. Despite reduction in transmission and infections, the number of cases who need hospitalization and who die are higher. And therefore, WHO recommends that in countries where there is a high incidence of acute hepatitis A disease, when the endemicity pattern is changing from high to intermediate, and if cost effectiveness favors, this vaccine should be included in the national childhood immunization schedule beginning at age of more than one year. This means the country needs data on burden of hepatitis A, especially severe disease, and data on prevalence of antibodies to hepatitis A. Many countries, when they do this, use a single dose schedule, and that seems to be highly effective. And this was also done in Argentina. In Argentina, in one hospital from 1993 to 2004, they noticed a large increase in the incidence of fulminant hepatic failure due to hepatitis A because of change in endemicity from high to intermediate. Other causes of liver failure are shown in white bars and due to hepatitis A in black bars. When vaccination against hepatitis A with one dose at one year of age was introduced in 2005, we can see within one and a half to two years, the hepatitis A disease was virtually eliminated. And that is what can be achieved. Now, let's change gears and move to hepatitis E virus. This virus has four genotypes. And these have totally different epidemiological patterns. Genotype 1 and 2 are transmitted by fecal oral route, similar to hepatitis A. And this is what we will discuss today. Slight differences from hepatitis A are, instead of, uh, of different fecal oral routes, person-to-person -person transmission is infrequent and waterborne infection is much more common. Also, when this infection occurs in pregnant women, there is a very high risk of fulminant hepatic failure and death. Genotypes 3 and 4 are found in developed countries of Europe and North America. Their route of transmission is very different and that occurs in immunosuppressed people and that's not what we're going to talk on today. Genotype 1 and 2 disease in Africa often occurs in the form of outbreaks in displaced populations and these outbreaks can often be prolonged even into years. There is one vaccine available named Hikolin, manufactured in China. It's licensed in China for one decade and has recently been licensed also in Pakistan. It's a subunit vaccine, a single dose syringe containing 30 microgram of viral capsid protein and three doses intramuscular at zero, one and six months are recommended. In a large trial in China, 
nearly 112,000 persons were randomized to receive either the vaccine or a placebo, which was a hepatitis B vaccine. Very good study. 86% persons completed the study. And if we look at results for four and a half years after completion of vaccine, uh, after the first dose, we can see the blue curve showing the unvaccinated group and red curve showing, showing the vaccinated group with a protection of 95% lasting for at least four and a half years. So who should receive this vaccine? Again, high risk groups who are at a higher risk of serious disease, travelers to endemic areas, and then some public health indications, which I'll come to in the next slides. Pregnant women, as we discussed earlier, have a higher risk of permanent hepatic failure and death if they get infection with this virus. However, there are some concerns. This vaccine has not been studied well in pregnancy and there is obviously a safety concern. Secondly, the absolute risk of hepatitis E virus disease during pregnancy is unclear. Second group, persons with chronic liver disease. Here, the main concern is that we do not know whether three doses of vaccine will be sufficiently immunogenic, whether the antibodies would persist and prevent infection. Third group, immunosuppressed, which is with genotype three and four. Again, we have very little data whether in them the vaccine will induce antibodies, protective antibodies. And again, the vaccine is developed from genotype one virus. So will it prevent disease by genotype three and four infection? Travelers, a six month schedule, nobody knows in advance whether they're going to travel six months later. So that is a challenge, except people who travel around the year so they could get the vaccine. An interesting concept is to use the vaccine to control an ongoing disease outbreak. On the face of it, it seems that a six month schedule is too long, but recently shorter schedules have been tried and they induce antibodies. Secondly, we don't have any data whether the virus leads to prevents infection if it is given, if the vaccine is given after infection has already occurred. So, but it appears that in principle, vaccine should be useful because the incubation period is fairly long and we need to do this as part of either practice or research in a few outbreaks. So friends, we have a safe and effective subunit vaccine for hepatitis C, which gives protection for at least five years. It's currently approved in only two countries. It seems it will be useful in high risk groups, but I think the greater use will lie if we can find out whether this will help control protracted outbreaks of hepatitis E. Thank you for your attention.